But anyway, here we go. Gonna be going to PlayStation. PlayStation. Wow. Pokemon Stadium. Nah, I saw I, you Snake. Should've, you should have just gone with it. I, I saw Snake and then PS2. I'm like, oh yeah, it's PlayStation 2 because Snake's here. Sure. But, uh. <laughs> Right off the bat, I'm liking that Omar is cooking grenades. Mm. That's just like right off. That's the first thing that I notice when I play against the snake. I'm like, are they gonna cook grenades? If the answer is yes, okay, I actually have to like think about this a lot. <laughs> <laughs> like, I have to put a lot more thought into this than I would otherwise. He's not just littering egg timers around. He's actually setting them to a specific time. Oh, himself up a little bit. That's, Burrow, that's an opening for him. That's the danger, really. And like, it's so hard to do as a snake player to keep both your explosive pattern unpredictable and then also stay perfectly safe. Because right. any little misalignment means you blow yourself up and your opponent gets an opening. Uh, it's surprising how often the play against snake is you just watch him, right? right and right. like, he might blow himself up in the process. Waiting for the option there. The Nair gonna do. Oh, that Nair was just so close. good because like it not only caught the jump get up, <gasps> but it also would have jumped over a get up attack and then right. still punished it too. Like yeah. that was a very good placement. There we go. Omar forcing Kuro off stage again, disengaging the moment he sees Kuro get past the Nikita and still puts himself in a position to get that up tilt. And he's just forcing Kuro to respect him constantly. Mm -hmm. He's forcing him to you know take stage instead of fighting into him. He's forcing him to, uh, you know, kind of play the neutral in a more slower pace. And we saw Kuro earlier. This guy is a machine. He just goes, goes, goes. But he does finally get that down smash in the upbeat like we saw earlier. Yeah. Over, like, the, the thing that I really love is that, like, Omar does have, like, his ideas for, like, what kind of elaborate, like, explosive traps he wants. But he's never focusing too much on that. He's always watching Kuro out of the corner of his eye. Whenever he's ready to react to, like, whenever Kuro's uh, approaching, even if it means, like, making his, like, cool little trap not quite come together it's like it's fine i'm and, not getting hit by him yeah and even if you don't react in time like being willing to react is more important than anything else i mm -hmm. think just because you it, it shows to me that you're trusting your abilities to do it oh uh -oh. oh that might be it yeah yeah that let's let's be real that down smash was like if he reacted, it was frame one of like Snake's dash. Like Kuro was just like, oh, he wants to burst in right now. Yeah, that was, that was kind of like a, a reaction to a precursor, right? Mm -hmm. he, the, the positioning was, a, oh, this is a good kind of positioning where he wants to be there. Wow, chasing him all the way off stage, getting him out of the cypher. All you need is just 7.1% to break that, and that back air is more than enough. The crazy, like, I swear Kuro took every stock in that game in half the time as the previous stock. Like, it's just yeah. somehow he just gets faster and faster at it. It's learning. It's iterating. Yeah, I, he's like a supercomputer, dude. No, he I, basically, as he's, like, figuring out the trap setups, as he's figuring out how Omar likes to, you know, kind of position himself and how safe he plays in certain situations, he's eventually going to get that pressure going. And then once he does, it's just put him in the blender, read after read after read. Mm -hmm. We'll see whether Omar can turn it around on his counter. going to be going to FD. Immediately picking up the grenade. Okay, yeah. Just putting up his shield, not going to just try trotting it back to yeah, Kuro. He had, he had just enough time to get that shield up and probably couldn't have thrown it. There's going to be a high up B. Good reaction to wow. the up air by yeah. Omar. A lot of snakes will just kind of sit there and try to go even higher or air dodge down in that kind of situation. But right there, it's like you've got the plus frames, basically. Mm -hmm. Also, I love just using that crouch in uh, neutral suddenly to just sneak under. Because yeah, that would have also snuck under a Zare as well. Yeah, like, that's good. Zare is like her best Pokemon tool. Mm -hmm. So sneaking underneath that, sneaking underneath like a jump fair, uh, a jump nair, that kind of thing. You know, it's, it's perfect. It's perfect positioning. Kuro still getting his pickup and ready to, to go right after that down smash because, again, there's almost no commitment to it. Able to get a punish on the jump. It looks like Omar's kind of hyper-focusing on grenading and the disadvantage. Wow, down smash? I think he could have actually up smashed there. What? Wow, that Nikita was perfect. It, it got tagged and then it fell right at Kuro's feet, but Kuro picking up right after the trade. Yeah, he, he's just committing to these projectiles just a little too early and, you know, in disadvantage state where Kuro is ready to cover it. Mm. Like that C4 up in the in the sky when your opponent is like right underneath you, why? Like they're just going to jump up and get you. Mm. Omar just trying to take his time watching Kuro, seeing what his openings are. His, his turn to speak to get something in. Oh, there, there we go. go. Beautiful stuff. We, there's even that moment of waiting. It's like, what can I do to make sure I kill? So I looked at the percent yeah, and everything came together. Slight, slight walk forward and all. Yeah. yeah. All right, Kuro just chilling, waiting. 
and he's all over these sh options out of shield. Snake just doesn't really have great out of shield options. Like his best option is Dare out of shield, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it, the issue with Dare out of shield is that it's just such a big commitment. You miss that Dare out of shield, you're sitting there for a long time. And meanwhile, we see Kuro's own responses out of his own shield, right? Recognizing, right. oh, that's a dash attack. I get to kill you. No yeah. hesitation on the up B. Snake dash attack turns out pretty punishable. I mean, that's kind of like all of his moves have like a, a hefty amount of end lag on them. That's kind of what makes them fair with how strong they oh, yeah. are in a zoning game is that if you get in and you like bait out the tilt and don't get hit by it, you get your punish. Yeah, people just people just kind of uh, over centralize the concept of, oh, dash attack like over spaces and makes it so that, you know, they're kind of immune to whatever punish out of shield. But it's like you just have to accept the fact you're not going to get the punish out of shield that you wanted. Yes, exactly, exactly. Sneak again, another back air at the end of the Cypher. We have that C4 just lettered off stage, but Omar sneaks his way back on. Oh. I love, yeah, the Nikita to blow up, cover a bunch of that land state, land uh, space. And Omar kind of back against the wall here. I like Kuro being patient, just waiting for his opportunity to poke in. Forward tilt gonna put Omar in a great position to try to cover wow. a lot. That mortar was so good. It yeah. was specifically to catch a flip jump. This is a dangerous situation. One down smash towards the ledge could do it. A back air close to the ledge could do it. Oh, that's scary. Getting dragged in. Not going to fall, but still uses double jump. <gasps> wow. You just did that. OK. So much power to you, man. Like, it worked. All right, Kuro, he's just got to make sure that he doesn't take too much percent here. If you play safe against Snake and just kind of let him pull grenades, eventually you'll find your end. And the thing that's interesting is, like, Omar seems pretty comfortable with that possibility as well. He's not in a rush to make this comeback. Yeah, man, we've got four, four minutes. minutes left. Let's just take it. Let's do it. Kuro, that lead slowly slipping away, getting closer and closer. That's the second time that he's air dodged through in that situation. We'll yeah. see if Kuro's ready for it this next is, time. This is actually very possible now for Omar to kill. We're looking at an <gasps> even game. Yeah, the grenades just being bouncing in the sky. It's oh, gonna my God. Hold on to dear life. This is an opportunity for Kuro, though, on the juggle. Looks to catch the landing with the side special and just keeps it going with the jab. Omar's just kind of overcommitting with these air dodges quite a bit. Kuro just just a little too quick to pull the trigger. That time was able to do it, punish the down air. Like I said, that move super laggy. Yeah. And uh, hey man, that's gonna be too over Kuro. And the important thing too is as he tossed out that whip to cover, right? He was disengaging as he was doing it, which right. then made it a lot safer so that he didn't have to worry about too much, especially when you have like a frame one jab ready to go as well as zero suit. Yes. Gives yourself a, a little bit extra layer of protection, which we saw like when there was an air dodge past that, it's like, well, I can still pick up something right yeah. afterwards. It's that that second punish option, right, which right, uh, right. being able to reroute from there, if this, then else, if do this, you know. A little bit of programming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got magic.